Hello all you hardcore boxing fans out there, how are you doing? It's Big Porky here, the voice of hardcore boxing and today I'm joined by Richard Towers, former heavyweight contender, uh, up at his gym in Masborough, Masborough and Rotherham. The gym's called Fight Crap. Fight Crap, that's the one. That's the one, bro. Oh, these are here. Yeah, just up to Fight Crap. And it's open on Monday, open, Richard. Mondays. Yeah, Monday, Monday to Friday. Monday to uh, we're going to open on the weekend soon. I've yeah. just got a, a few instructors coming and they're going to yeah. basically take classes for boxer size, uh, fitness classes, strength and conditioning classes. Weekends are going to be for coaching classes, you know, so yeah. I can just show people how I do what I do. And I understand that a lot of people aren't, this is boxing for you. Brendan explained it to me. Uh, Adam explained it to me. Emmanuel explained it. Um, in boxing, and rightly so, you've got to prove yourself first. So yeah. as soon as I get some kids coming through with what I do, then yeah. people will want to jump on board. So uh, the coaching classes will be open on a weekend. Mm. Um, and uh, boxer size stuff, I didn't want to do myself. So I've brought a couple of coaches in. Excuse me. Brought a couple of coaches in. And um, I'll get them, you know, doing pads and stuff the way, the way I do it. And, you know, just uh, an extension of... Uh, basically, how we, how we do things, pal. Well, that's brilliant. So, everything's going all right now, then, at the moment, Richard? Yeah, going brilliant, pal. Yeah, they've, we've got Cash Ali in, obviously. Yeah. Cash is um, he's, uh, he's showing up every day. He's doing, doing his. Um, doing his he's, training, he's training hard, isn't he? Cash? He's, he's really grafting, and he's, you can see the, the, the physical improvement as well as you know the, the mental improvement. And who else is training up here at the moment, Richard? Uh, we've got, I've got a gym full of kids. I've got like 20 kids in here. Mm -hmm. They're all really good. If you watch them, they're, yeah. they're, they're yeah. really showing up. And uh, we have we have a few heavyweights come up and spoil with cash. Yeah. Uh, we've had Martin McCauley up. We've had Fraser Clark up. We've had uh, a few other kids up. So mm -hmm. it's, uh, it's, it's going well, Pat. It's going well. Oh, that's brilliant. Well, I've got a surprise for you anyway. I've agreed to fight Spencer Fiona for charity in oh, really? uh, the beginning of March. Right, okay. So, uh, am I alright to come up and uh, do a bit up here, Richard? Yeah, that's right. right. More than welcome. I'll I'm show gonna, you a few little things. Yeah, yeah definitely. I'm going to do a bit here, a bit of a few Kimmick Whale and just go yeah. and just... What, is it for money? No, it's, uh, it's for charity. We're for not going to fight for you. It's just for... Right. It's Spencer, he put a tweet out saying, uh, so, do you want to fight me? Because Tommy the Guru Allen is... Uh, you don't want to fight me no more, and uh, are you up for it or are you, are you, are you, so yeah, I'm free if it's for charity, mm. it's a good cause isn't it, yeah, 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 obviously definitely. a bit, Ed, Edgar's on at £200, I've got a couple of stone to knock off, £20. How, how long have you got uh, to train? Uh, about 15 weeks, oh, so plenty, plenty of time, let's yeah. take two stone off. You, you come up here and do three days a week here, Russ, yeah, and, yeah. Um, and you'll, you'll, most certainly, he'll know he's been in a fight. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, so yeah. it's all. He's got that Adam Move crouching style, what David A had. Yeah, yeah, you were tricky, tricky as a customer. Spencer, uh, Spencer yeah, yeah. this time, you know. Yeah. Um, Into all that shoulder roll stuff, in here and all that. Yeah, that all that old school stuff. stuff yeah, yeah. He's, he's slippery character, do you know. <laughs> yeah, um, so, yeah. Um, yeah. In, in boxing, of course. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. Um, yeah, he, he's all right, Spencer. He's all mm. right, and um, I'm sure uh, he understands, you know, mm. uh, appropriateness. I'm sure he understands, you know, not taking advantage. Yeah. Uh, I'm sure he understands that. Uh, you've not boxed before, yeah. I'm sure you understand that he was a professional level. Yeah, yeah, uh, oh, yeah, yeah. Good fighter. Yeah. Um, so I'm, I'm sure that uh, he's doing it for the um, charity side of things. Yeah, and, yeah. And, and for the laugh as well, you know, it's, yeah. it's a good experience, Pat. Plus, so like you know, I said to yeah. you, come yeah. train. Yeah. And you'll give a good account of yourself, yeah. The, I, th I think how the fight is going to be put out there, because he's, he's dealing with the PR side of it, I think we're both going to do, but I'm going to do like a a blog every few days, you know, as, as my training camp is going on. Yeah. And it's going to show the, the, the fans out there that, you know, they're going to think, ah, oh, he's just some YouTuber who's, uh, he has plenty to say for saying he doesn't want to box. Well, I'll probably have more respect for fighters through doing it. Yeah, and get a bit more respect as well. Oh, Because, you know, it's, uh, it's hard to support it, well, isn't it? I mean, you're yeah, out there yeah. on your own, aren't you? Yeah, definitely. Blood, sweat, tears, you've got to have everything, haven't you? Agility. Yeah. yeah. There's all sorts of going on. There's a lot going on in a boxer's mind and I don't think they get as much respect. I give a lot of boxers respect. Yeah. Where I'm critical is where we have people like, for example, Eddie Hearn will come out and he'll say, David Price is coming back, he's going to do this and do that. And 
when certain promoters are giving us too much ball, I have a problem with that. And I think some fighters can be casualties of it, can't yeah, they? Yeah, definitely. I mean, Daniel so. Price is a nice enough fella, but he's been iced seven times. Yeah. And I think you should hang him up, personally, myself. But if they're going to get a license, they have to sell it, don't they? Yeah. And I have an argument with that, really. Yeah, I understand, Russ, and you're perfectly right. And, and to be honest with you, uh, I think with regards to David, David's he's he's been he's been uh, knocked out a few a good few times now. Seven. Uh, and at heavyweight, that could be considered dangerous. David's yeah. done this for a long time. David understands that uh, boxing at this level, mm. it's more likely to happen yeah. at this level. But you know, by no means is David finished. And, yeah. and I mean, if you just a look at, you can see that he's capable. You can see that he's got things to work on. But I think that's what the I think that's where the addiction of boxing yeah. comes into play because mm -hmm. David knows he can knock people out. David knows he can box. David knows he's got all this experience. Mm -hmm. But going into a fight at that level, it's not all about physical stuff. It's not no. all about mental stuff. It's a, a good equal share of everything. And you've just got to have that little thing in your mind that um, gets you, just takes you, gets you through that particular level because yeah. uh, let's let's face it, these guys, somebody asked me today, they went, why aren't you boxing anymore, Richard, sit up straight, please. Somebody said, why aren't you boxing anymore? And um, and I said, because I don't want to disrespect the sport, it's as simple as that, you know. I will never, I will never, uh, uh, um, the best boxer, I was never the best fighter. Yeah. I was tougher than what I ever thought I was. Yeah. I could punch harder than what I ever thought I could punch. Yeah. All the way through my boxing career. But one of the things that I realised going to, you know, all these uh, training camps with Deontay, with Joshua, with Pulev, with Pavetkin, with Klitschko's, with uh, every, every way you can possibly think of, um, I realised that there's a lot more involved than what people people realise, especially outside of boxing. And then you've got the fighters, professional, yeah. at, at European, British level, Commonwealth level, that don't quite get it. And then when they get up to that level, we're talking about world level, because you can't deny uh, uh, Chisora, he's, he's in there, he's yeah. mixing it, and he's getting stuck in it. He's giving good, good accounts of himself. And, and the thing is, what, what I said to the kids is, it's not about, what, how you look. It's not about superstardom. It's not necessarily about how much money you make straight away. It can't be about that because there's no money in it until you get to a significant level, especially the lighter weights. Heavyweight, the, the paydays are a bit better, mm. but it's a hard sport. And this is the thing with, with regards to not disrespecting the sport, I understand that it's a lifestyle. You have to live boxing. If you're boxing, you have to live it. I said to kids, I said to them, it's all about how long you can last. Mm -hmm. It's all about how long you can put up with my SHIT. It's all about how long you can stick this out, how long you can dig in for. With no rewards, don't expect anything. And eventually, everything comes to you. Eventually, you get your dues. Um, and, and there's no, I don't think there's no other finer example than, than boxing to, to show these things, Russ. It's the uh, hardest sport in the world. I remember talking to Froch about it years ago and he's, 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 it's like no joke. I, I'll tell you a little story. I went to his house and we were supposed to be going to Loudon for something to eat. Yeah. And he said, look, I, 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 we're, we're not going to have much time here. Should we do it another time? I said, well, I've got plenty of time here. We've got an hour. And he's like, no, I've got to get, uh, I've got a training session. He's third one a day. Yeah. You know what I mean? Yeah, yeah. And he'd only been for his run. He, he, he'd done a he'd done a session at dinner time, and you know he's he's ready to train again. You know, mm -hmm. three o'clockish. Yeah, that's it. It's a lifestyle. You know, and, people don't realise. And then in front of telly with a box set, and yeah. then he go, you go again the next day. Exactly. Exactly. And uh, he said, I can't cut corners, and yeah. that he said, when I when I do cut corners, you get found out like the first Groves fight. Yeah. Instead of doing his morning run, yeah. he was going on treadmill. Yeah. And he said, he was telling himself that... See ya. See ya. Right. Right. Sorry, he, no problem, mate. He was telling himself, oh, I've done the equivalent miles on the treadmill. But he said, well, but also I've got this other thing in my head telling me that, no, you haven't done your six mm. mile like yep. you would on the, you know, 
up down yeah, here, nodding yeah. up and down. Yeah, yeah, yeah. He says, so he had that playing on his mind. You, you can't cut corners, and for that one, obviously, when I got to see him, that was the Grove, the, the three match one, rather, right about yeah, then. Yeah. And then he was full on it. He yeah, he's on it, and he's done it. He's, yeah, he's, 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 he's put to a point of obsession. Yeah, and yeah. This is, you know, this is the thing with what a lot of athletes, at mm. whatever level, mm. you know, they seem to, everybody gets complacent. Yeah. Where the Klitschko's stand out for me, being consummate, the consummate professionals that they were, mm. they'd they figured out that it's just a small period of time. They've got yeah. to be professional. They've got to act professional, talk yeah. professional. They've got to be the consummate professionals. Yeah. The Carl were like that. They wanted and, professional, and, wanted, and yeah, Carl yeah. as well. Do you know, um, with regards to Carl Frog, I don't know him to that. Yeah. But any time I've met the fella, he seems like a nice, nice yeah. guy. But. Um, He's and, got OCD like you. And, and, and very similar. I see yeah. very similar. I've heard very similar. Yeah, yeah, yeah. About, very, yeah, yeah you know, like having that. to do this and you can't do anything else but this. Clinton were like that as well. Yeah, and it's probably why. I want you because you're yeah. regimented, aren't you? Yeah. yeah, exactly, Russ. Yeah. You've got to be, you know, because it's, it's, it's very difficult. I said to kids now, kids come in and I see, you know, they, they lose concentration for a second and straight away I'll be like, that's it! And you see, like, straight away, and I go, now I've got your attention. And they're fully listening to me then because I've attacked them verbally. Yeah, yeah. I've got into the nervous system, I've got into the brain, or whatever it is. That's what it is. Then when you shout, then I'm like, yeah, straight away, you pay attention. Yeah, yeah, pay attention. Yeah. And these kids are no different. Now they're getting used to it. They know that I'm not, I'm not going to hurt them. They know that I'm not, yeah, no yeah. risk to them. I'm, I'm doing nothing but benefiting them. Yeah. Not only in the gym, outside the gym as well, Rose, as yeah. you know. And what happens is now they've real they realise that I won't accept any other standard. Yeah. I won't accept any other standard other than when you come in here, you've got probably a few hours, a few hours to give as good a representative of your of yourself as a fighter, as a potential boxer, as what I want you to be in here. And this is the price you're paying for all the time I'm giving, for all the money that I've put into what I'm doing and all the passion that I'm showing and all the dedication and everything else I'm putting in. Show me something, you give me something back. I don't want, obviously not yeah. in it for the money. Yeah. They pay me seven pounds a week. Brendan used to say seven pounds a week. The rest of the, the rest of the- You weren't even charging them at the beginning, were you? When they were coming, were they? No, they were no, free. 